Um, my name is Tommy Haas. I'm originally from Germany. Came over here to the United States back in 1991. And one of the first persons that I met is sitting right next to me. And you are? Uh, Greg Hill. I uh, met Tommy in 1991. I uh, moved to the Boletari's Tennis Academy in 1988. And three years later, Tommy showed up. And we were became like best friends like overnight. It just clicked. And uh, the rest is history. It's kind of the, the group after Agassi and Courier, Tommy and I. It was, it was Tommy, myself, Anna Kornikova, Max Murney, you know, uh, Gabriel Trifu, Glenn Weiner, um, just a lot of great players, Justin Gibblestop. And then, um, yeah, we were kind of the last group before the MBTA kind of was turned into IMG Academy. And uh, it, was, it became more all sports, but uh, we, were the, we were the last uh, traveling, traveling uh, pros. A lot of our holidays playing tournaments and, and uh, just on the tennis court. So it was very different. Um, we kind of we kind of created our own family at the academy, and our and our families did live their life. You know, grew up um, and didn't see us very much. So it was a uh, it was an amazing experience. I mean, I guess it was a massive sacrifice, but at the time we didn't we weren't thinking about it. We just really enjoyed it. But I think that's why we created such a bond, Tommy and I, because we needed each other. We were competing against each other with each other, but we also needed each other as friends, almost like family, to get through it because it was very difficult. I think, you know, as soon as you realize um, that uh, as a young child your goal is to become a professional tennis player and uh, you make that commitment, number one, with yourself and then with your family. And like Greg mentioned, um, you know, you go to an academy in a different state for Greggy and a different country for me. <clears throat> it's a big sacrifice, yet at the same time, it's something that uh, we wanted to do. We chose to do and uh, we were good at, at something and uh, obviously really much enjoyed that process and trying to go after our dreams. So the challenge really is, is uh, trying to stay motivated, trying to stay um, in, in the moment and just trying to get better. There's lots of ups and downs that come with it. You still got to manage you know, your schoolwork, you got to manage your friends, got to realize who are really your truly friends. Um, and then you got to compete and try to be better than everyone else on top of it. So you're not always making new friends. So that's why this bond between Greggy and I is, is so very special because we went through a lot. We went through a lot of fights. Um, and here we are, you know, 32 years later, um, giving back now. You know, we both uh, went on to be uh, very successful in our lives. Um, we're still best brothers. And um, now we are here giving back, uh, still doing what we love. And that is playing doubles and, and games with, uh, with kids that love the game of tennis and hopefully have similar careers to ours. And not always necessarily means that you're going to turn professional tennis players, but tennis can teach you a lot. And, um, you know, the, the, the values of life, the dealing with losses and, uh, and wins and, uh, and learning the ups and downs and, you know, going out there and, uh, and the hard work and the sacrifices and being disciplined. That's, that's really what life is all about if you want to achieve something in life. So um, we're very grateful that we can give back. Um. I mean, I think uh, discipline is just consistent focus every day, over and over again, repetition, not just for short periods of time. I think discipline is something that, something you can do over a long period of time. But in order to have discipline, you really need to love what you're doing. If you don't love it, you're not gonna have discipline. You know, you're not gonna wanna do it. Um, so I really have to say, if you're gonna play tennis, you know, and you really love it, then it's easy to be disciplined, come out and focus and do, do the right things, listen to your coach, bring your water jug, make sure your rackets are strong, do the little things every single day, and no excuses, you can do it every single day. Um, and, it's not, and if you do that, you start gaining little by little, and good things happen to you. Well, I think first and foremost, we were lucky enough to have a family that was uh, very loving, competitive, and, uh, and, and making sure that we get to live our dreams. Not every kid, we realize that, doesn't, doesn't not necessarily have that, um, that opportunity. Um, you know, my dad was a tennis teacher, was making a you know, fairly good living, and um, you know, that's how I got into tennis, and he supported every step of the way. Of course, I got a scholarship when I went to Nick Boateri back in 1991, and that continued uh, the, you know, to, to pave the way to, to go after my goals and my dreams. And then IMG came along as a, as a management company and supported me that way. Um, and of course, I paid every single dime back, and that's how it goes. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's great to have that support. It's great to have people believe in you. And Greggy's family is the same. They made sure that he gets to live uh, potentially his dream um, and supported him. And, basically open the doors to say you're going to Boletarius because it's what you want to do and we'll try to manage to see you as much as we can 
Yet, Greggy has four siblings, I have two siblings, they were, you know, some of them were a little bit into tennis, some of them were not, and uh, so you have to try to manage that as parents, and when you're 12, 13, 14 years old, you don't know what that means yet until you have your own kids, and uh, so there's a lot of different roles, a lot of different scenarios, and in the end of the day, the parents really pave the way, and then it's really who, who comes in, who believes in you, who do you meet, do you find tennis um, people that are, you know, very giving and, and try to pave the way for you, management companies, if you are talented, and if not, you always got to just try to find a way. And there is ways and uh, even Match Point Impact is going to be hopefully one of those ways. And that's what we're trying to create here. That's what we're trying to do here and try to, you know, raise enough money to help kids that uh, not necessarily have the needs or the families and try to give them these kind of experience and stay in this great game of tennis. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to say uh, that essentially like you don't have to play professional tennis. I mean, you know, great thing about tennis is a vehicle that can take you to, you know, college level, get a great education. I think that's something that's very special. Like you can be the first generation to go to college and have it paid for or have a, you know, some sort of scholarship. I think that's really a big, opens up a lot of doors, right? Just this sport. So, um, you know, you don't have to go on to the ATP, ATP tour, WTA tour. So I just feel like Tennis is one of the greatest vehicles in life to open up doors, maybe that you would normally say that's not possible, right? There's no way I can get there. With this sport like this, the, the, the people you meet um, and the doors it opens, and it's just amazing. Like for Tommy and I, like we always looked at uh, pro tennis, right? But most of the people that went to the Voluntary Tennis Academy ended up college level and then going on to careers. So you don't hear about all those success stories, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Imagine, you know, I think we all needed some support along the way and, you know, giving to the kids that don't have the opportunity. It's amazing just giving back. Purposehood, right? I think that's what life's about. If you do well, you know, pay it forward. And this is just a great opportunity because I think all these kids are amazing human beings and they're so eager to play the sport. And imagine like the next, you know, you know, Serena Williams or the next Capriati or is out here and if you could support them. Imagine what that would look like, and that, I promise you, if you do, they'll, they'll look back and remember you for supporting him. Because I remember everyone who supported me. I can tell you right now who they are.